Hey guys, this is Sam Siegel with TYT and TYT Politics, and I'm ready to primary these centrist Democrats. So, first on my list to primary is Joe Manchin. So, Senator Joe Manchin of West Virginia held a meeting of sorts with constituents, and he used that meeting, as things progressed, to trash Bernie Sanders. So, constituents were asking him, basically, why did you vote for Hillary Clinton in the primary for his superdelegate vote when West Virginia went to Bernie Sanders? So, let's see what Joe Manchin says. Committed on that. Bernie's not a Democrat. Bernie won't yeah, register. He was as a at the time. Bernie doesn't run as a Democrat. Bernie had to list himself as a Democrat because they wouldn't let him put socialists on the count, on, on the ballot. That's what Bernie. That's what Bernie wants. But all 55 counties, the West, the West Virginia Democrats voted for Bernie Sanders. Right. I, mm -hmm. I committed before that. I'm saying I've, I've committed as a delegate, super delegate, before that. To what? <laughs> Well, I am, but I'm saying, I already made a commitment. I already, I already signed a made a commitment. That's what you said. You said I should have changed. But you could have, I mean, you yeah. weren't obligated to that. You could have changed that. Well, I still that. believe that Hillary Clinton would have been a much better candidate. I still, I voted for Hillary Clinton. It was not working I, for you. But you weren't necessarily, huh? rep <laughs> but you weren't necessarily representing the, your constituency because... On that there, as a delegate, I was a super delegate. I wasn't a super delegate representing. I was a super delegate, so I represented what I thought and what I believe would be the best job. Well, how, so you represented what you thought, but you didn't represent what the Democrats in West Virginia thought. Exactly. Well, but the, the super delegates, I think, all went the same way that I went. I mean, they were already committed. Oh, it was a travesty. Yeah. yeah. Yes. This is absolutely ridiculous. First of all, the fact that Democrats think that it is still a talking point, a, a good talking point, to say, hey, this guy's not a Democrat, and that would somehow be an insult to him, is absolutely absurd. There are more independents registered than Republicans and Democrats. About half the Democratic Party in the primary was split. It was between an independent socialist and the most establishment Democrat you can get. And it was still split. So obviously there's some people that feel that the Democratic Party is going in the wrong direction. Bernie infiltrated that party and within months had the support of nearly half the party. Bernie only received also the endorsement of one sitting senator throughout the whole primary. One sitting senator. Senator uh, Merkley in, um, in Oregon. So he won 22 states without having any support from the establishment Democrats, anybody, all those local elected officials gave him no support and he still won 22 states. So maybe not only are people disagreeing with the party as a whole, they're also disagreeing with their local officials, the local elected officials and what they're doing. Also, another point to be made about his, his comment that I committed before that I committed as a superdelegate before that. Doesn't that seem ridiculous that he committed to a candidate before anybody cast their ballots, let alone the ballots cast in his state? Shouldn't you maybe wait, Joe Manchin, for your constituents to actually vote before you make that commitment? This is one of the major problems that people had with the Democratic Party, that so many people in the establishment of the superdelegates went and immediately said that they were going to cast their votes for Hillary Clinton before the primaries had even gotten rolling. So for Joe Manchin to then, after the fact, after the fact of the election, say, yeah, I already made a commitment beforehand, and thinking that that's a logical explanation, when so many people voiced their concerns about that, is absolutely ridiculous and not politically savvy. As the Democrats love to make themselves seem that they're so politically savvy, it's not. It's ridiculous. So, then, last week, 
Joe Manchin had a contentious call with uh, constituents where they wanted him to have a formal town hall, an actual formal town hall where constituents can actually voice questions in uh, you know, a reasonable way and they can get a reasonable answer. And Joe Manchin has basically been refusing to have one of those official town halls. So Politico just put out the article where Politico says, Manchin invites primary challenge from Sanders supporters in call. So let's see what Joe Manchin says. So Politico writes, West Virginia, Senator Joe Manchin invited Bernie Sanders supporters to mount a primary challenge against him in Friday phone call with West Virginians, according to a recording of the call viewed by Politico. A sometimes contentious 15-minute conversation was largely focused on the prospect of Manchin scheduling a town hall for his constituents, an idea he said he was open to, while also repeatedly asking what the objective would be. What the objective would be. There doesn't need to be an objective. You owe your constituents a town hall. These guys spend a lot of their time not even in their own state on Capitol Hill. So maybe you should take an afternoon or an evening out of your time to talk to the people that actually either voted for you or want to know answers about their community. The conference call, which involves several political activists, was recorded by one of the activists, and Manchin can be heard responding to various questions and challenges. But as the town hall conversation got chippy, and activists on the call brought up points of disagreement with the senator, Manchin exclaimed, what you ought to do is vote me out. Vote me out. I'm not changing. Find somebody else that can beat me and vote me out. Is that an invitation or a threat? I don't understand, responded one of the activists. Sure, it's an invitation. You ought to. I could tell that because we're on different pages. Are you a Bernie Sanders guy? Asked the senator. Uh, well, I don't see the relevance of that to this conversation, responded the voter. I'm just asking, Manchin said. I stand with West Virginians who voted for Bernie Sanders in the primary in all 55 counties where he won, the voter said. Then, of course, what did Manchin said? Bernie Sanders is not even a Democrat. These guys are like broken records. He's not even a Democrat. Do you think anybody that cares, you don't think anybody knew that during the primary, that he wasn't a Democrat before the primary? Of course they knew. They just realized that maybe I'll put policy over party. Maybe I'll actually listen to what this candidate's saying rather than just judge him on his party preference. This is absolutely ridiculous. And, and the funny thing about this whole thing is, is that Manchin has the audacity, the audacity to be talking about Bernie Sanders isn't even a Democrat when this guy splits with his party so much of the time and really stands with a lot of Republican values. In, in this call, in this call, one of the activists uh, mentions the fact that, uh, that, that, um, he, uh, that Manchin um, was going against the environmental regulations of, of um, former President Barack Obama that President Trump just signed to repeal. And Manchin said, in response to cutting back on these environmental regulations, he said, what Barack Obama did to our state is criminal. He said, Barack Obama, what he did to our state is criminal. He called the former Democratic president criminal in his actions. Said they put 400 new regulations on top and they just smothered us. It was ridiculous. This guy is so... It is so absurd that he would be talking about not being a Democrat and then calling Obama criminal for putting environmental regulations in a state like West Virginia, which has extreme environmental threats with all of the coal mining that's going around in that area. It is not good for the environment. And then he responds by saying one of the only good things that Barack Obama did 
by talking about the environmental regulations and then standing with Trump to repeal? That's the other thing. Manchin, it might as well be a Republican. He stood with Donald Trump in repealing the anti-coal Obama policy. He was one of the first people to back Rex Tillerson, one of the first Democrats to back Rex Tillerson for Secretary of State. Rex Tillerson, the CEO of Exxon, one of the first, first people, first Democrats to, to publicly endorse Rex Tillerson. He also voted for Scott Pruitt as head of the EPA. Another reason why he is so far right of Democrats by going against these environmental issues. Now, there's only one thing that has to be done here. And that means that Joe Manchin has to be primaried. That's it. This guy has got to get out. This guy repeatedly goes against environmental regulations. This guy goes against, he was going against Bernie's um, free public, uh, free tuition for public colleges plan. He went against the universal health care plan. These are all policies that Democrats in a majority support. Democrats. Remember that, Joe Manchin? Democrats. The party that you are a part of and that you also call out people like Sanders who are more of a Democrat than you will really ever be? This is the problem with, this, with, with these guys is they, they, get, they get so comfortable in their seats. The, the guys like Joe Manchin have been there for a while now and they get so comfortable in, in being elected when these people are going against everything that Democrats stand for. Joe Manchin won his primary to, um, to Shirley Fletcher with 80% of the vote. 80% of the vote. So this guy is probably thinking, you know what? I'm never going to get primaried by a serious competitor. So let me just talk all the shit that I want. Because these guys aren't going to do anything. Guys. Guys. He is inviting us. Inviting us. To primary him. Inviting us. I say, let's take him up on that offer. And let's primary Joe Manchin. And let's primary all the other centrist Democrats while we're at it. Heidi Heitkamp, um, McCaskill, all these people. They need to be primary, all of them. Right now is the revolution. Right now. Everybody is mobilized and ready to go. And these guys really need to understand. This is why Joe Manchin doesn't want to do a town hall. They need to understand that we are on their heels. And we will primary them if they don't follow not only their constituencies, but the policies of the left, of what is happening right now in this progressive movement that Bernie Sanders started. Where's Clinton? Still hiking in the woods. Bernie is out there every day, every day, fighting against the corporate powers within the party, within these centrist, centrist politicians and these Republican right-wing politicians. Bernie is going against them every single day, and we have to stand with him, and we also have to stand against Joe Manchin and fight. Fight. Maybe we won't get Joe Manchin out in 2018, but we're going to get him out eventually. We will get him out, and we will mount a very, very competitive primary challenge for him in 2018. You could promise that. We will mount a very, very competitive primary challenge, Joe Manchin. So watch out, because the progressive movement is coming for you. And let me tell you something right now, Joe. The progressive movement is way more enthusiastic than the centrist Democrat movement. We will be at those town halls. We will be at your rallies. We will be at your office. We will be there and we will also put a candidate there that will primary you and is way better of a politician and supports the ideas and values of Democrats in West Virginia. Because you have clearly stated that you don't care about the policies and the thoughts of West Virginians. All you care about is what you believe is right and what you believe should be done. You are going to get primary, Joe Manchin. That is a promise.